Hello guys, in this video I'm going to speak about a very important process that happens every day in the human body and it's happening right now in your body while you are watching this video. It's the mitosis and the cell cycle in general. Um, I'm going to speak in details how that, uh, what's happening during the cell cycle and what is the mitotic phase and how the cell is being divided into two. What is the mitosis? Mitosis is a um, process of cell division in which one cell can give me two exactly identical uh, sister cells. This mitosis happens during the cell cycle in which, as I told you, one cell can give me two identical cells. Uh, in the human body, for example, you know that the cell has 46 chromosomes and then I get two cells with 46 chromosomes each. How does it happen? In order to un understand the mitosis, you have first to understand the full cell cycle. The cell cycle consists out of three phases, or three main phases, let's say, which is the interphase, the mitotic phase, and the cytokinesis. The interphase, as you see here, takes most of the time, and then the, in the mitotic phase, of course, there is the mitosis, and then in the cytokinesis, the cell will be finally divided into two cells. Let's see this into, in, in details. But first, I'm going to give you like an overview, and then we're going to speak about every phase in details. First, the interphase. So in the interphase, the cell grows, and then the DNA um, duplicates. So the genetic material duplicates inside the cells. This is like an overview of the interphase. Then we have the mitotic phase in which the mitosis happens and then the uh, genetic material is uh, splitted into two. And then in the cytokinesis, we, the, as I told you before, the cytoplasm is separated and or divided and then I will get two separated cells. So let's now take talk about every one of these phases in details. The interphase. The interphase consists of three phases or three subphases G1 which is the first gap phase the synthetic phase and the second gap phase which are all part of the interphase as you see here the first gap phase from its name it's a gap phase so it's a gap between uh, the cytokinesis or the end uh, of the first cycle and the synthetic phase. In the gap phase, nothing important is happening, so no important events. The, the cell is simply growing up and the, cell, the cytoplasmic volume is increasing and the cell is producing more organelles and proteins. So this is the cell, this is the cytoplasm, the nucleus and the DNA inside the nucleus and then the cell will be continuously growing, physically growing, um, the cytoplasmic size will be increased or volume will be increasing and the cell will be metabolically active, there will be more organelles and proteins produced into the cytoplasm. This is everything in the first gap phase, so nothing really important. Then we move into the second phase, which is the synthetic phase. In the synthetic phase, there are two important events, which is first, the duplication of the DNA. So here we have um, the 46 chromosomes, and then every chromosome is going to be copied, and we will get out of one chromosome two sister chromatids, which are uh, linked together in the middle in the centromere. Every, chromosomes, every chromosome is going to give me two sister chromatids, so the DNA material or the genetic material itself is going to be copied and duplicated. This is the first event happening in the synthetic phase, so DNA duplication, and second, the centrosome copying. We have a structure here called the centrosome, which is extremely important um, for the separation of the two sets of uh, DNA, and this is going to be happen later in the um, mitotic phase, so in the mitosis. And this structure, which is the centrosome, is going to be copied in the synthetic phase and is going to give me two centrosomes, as you see here. So in the synthetic phase, first I'm getting two sets of DNA, and then I'm getting two centrosomes.
I'm going to give you a little idea about the centrosome. This is the centrosome. Uh, they are structures of centrioles, and then these centrosomes can give or can produce microtubules. They can give microtubules out of tubulin subunits. So this centrosome can make the tubulin subunits together in order to give me these microtubules that are going to be used later in the mitotic phase to build this uh, spindle. And this mitotic spindle is extremely important, as I told you, or is essential in order to separate the DNA material or to separate the two sets of DNA. Okay, so let's go back to the synthetic phase. So in the synthetic phase, as I told you, um, I get two sets of DNA and two centrosomes. Then I'm going to the third phase in the interphase, which is the second gap phase. As I told you in the first gap phase, nothing important is happening in the gap phase. It is a gap phase, so not, nothing is happening. The cell is just growing um, in size. The volume of the cytoplasm is growing, is increasing, and I'm getting more particles and more, more organelles, more molecules in the cytoplasm. So the cell is just growing in this gap phase. Okay, at the end of this G2, I'm getting to the end of the interphase, and when the G2 uh, phase ends, now the cell is ready to enter to the mitotic phase and to undergo mitosis. The interphase, as I told you before, takes most, most of the time in the cell cycle. The G1 phase, the, so this is the cell, cell cycle, this G1 phase takes around 11 hours, and then the synthetic phase take around eight hours and four hours for the second gap phase, which gives me 23 hours. So in normal cells, in normal human somatic cells, um, the cell cycle takes place in 24 hours. 23 hours of those are for the interphase, and then the mitotic phase and the cytokinesis Take place, take place both in one hour. This is the general um, the general case. I mean, there are fast cycling cells, like for example the intestine lining cells, which undergo this cell cycle within nine hours. Or for example, non-human cell like budding yeast, for example, they are extremely rapid cells and they undergo cell cycle in ninety minutes. So not all the cell uh, undergo the cell cycle at the same time. This is this varies from one cell to the other, and also the timing from for each phase is diff like varies from one cell to the other. But this is the general case in the human somatic cells. Now, at the end of the interphase, we are going. To, um, yeah, this is that. So, uh, from one cell, I'm getting two cells. This is at the end of the cell cycle. Now, at the end of the interphase, I'm going to enter to the mitotic phase. And this mitotic phase itself exists of five subphases. And these phases are uh, prophase, uh, prometaphase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Now, let's see what ha what's happening in every one of these phases. I mean, maybe if you look at these and you see five phases, you might say it's quite um, complicated, but it's not complicated. If you understand what's happening in every one of these phases, just keep in mind that everything happening in the mitotic phase is simply the separation of two sets of DNA into two separated sets. That's it. But like, let's see the steps. This is the cell, so at the end of the interface, I got a big cell with two sets of DNA and two centros centrosomes. In the prophase, two important events are happening. Let's start with the prophase. So in the prophase, first of all, the DNA from or the chromosomes are condensing. This is the chromosome. The chromosome can be either relaxed or condensed. In the prophase, these chromosomes here are going to be super condensed. But how? This is the double-stranded DNA. The double-stranded DNA or the DNA strand is a super long chain. And in order to increase its length, 
uh, not to increase the length, but to make it a little bit like small, like shorter. Um, we are going to coil this. This uh, DNA chain is coiled around these structures, which are made of histones. Histones are spherical proteins that are made together. Like uh, every eight histones are put together in order to form this structure of eight histones on which the DNA strand is coiling. And this is what we call the nucleosomes. Now the nucleosomes can be relaxed like this, what, what you are seeing here, or can be coil, coiled over themselves in order to make these super coils. So this is the condensed form of the of the of these nucleosomes and this is the relaxed form of the nucleosomes of course this is happening by an acetylation or deacetylation of the histone's tail these histone's protein have tails and when these tails are deacetylated the histones will be condensed together and when the tails are acetylated they they will be uh, relaxed so let's go back to the prophase. In the prophase, the chromosomes are condensed together to make the DNA material more condensed or more concentrated. So you see, this is how the let's let's imagine it like this. This is the DNA in the cell before the chromosomes are condensing, and this is afterward. So this is what's happening in the prophase, and that the second event that happens in the prophase is that these two guides here, the centrosomes, will start to form these microtubules in order to form something called the spindle, the mitotic spindle. So the centrosome here is going to start to build these uh, microtubules, as I told you before, out of the tubulin uh, structures or subunits in order to form this spindle here. So this spindle it will start to be formed in the prophase. So as I told you, two important events in the prophase, the DNA or the chromosomes are condensed and the spindle will start to be formed. This is the prophase, simply. Now let's move to the prometaphase. In the prometaphase, the, you have to look here. So the nuclear envelope is going to be boom, disintegrated, as you see here. And this happens because of the phosphorylation of the nuclear lamins, which is going to disintegrate this nuclear envelope. And this is needed to liberate, actually, the genetic material or the DNA from inside the nucleus. Because I want these chromosomes to be attached to this spindle, so the nuclear envelope is disintegrated here. And then because the, 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 the nuclear envelope is disintegrated, then the chromosomes will be attached here, will start to be attached on the spindle because of the kinetochores. The kinetochores are uh, proteins, they are disc-like proteins, um, that exist on the spindle, so here on the on the microtubules here I have kinetochores, and also on the chromosomes here in the centromere I also have uh, kinetochores. So the kinetochores which are on the microtubules here will recognize the kinetochores which are on the uh, centromere, and these chromosomes are going to be attached on the spindle, like this. I'm um, I'm going. I'm going to, to this uh, figure always because it's a very good one. So, the, as I told you, yeah, the chromosomes are going to be attached on the spindle. And this is what happens in the prometaphase. So, two important events uh, as well. So, the nuclear envelope will be disintegrating. And then these um, chromosomes are going to be attached to the spindle by the kinetochores. In the metaphase, this is the metaphase. In the metaphase, the spindle will be um, will will be formed like this, and then the the chromosomes are going to be attached on the spindle. What's going to happen here is that these two centrosomes are going to pull 
the chromosomes from both poles or from both sides. sides. The pulling forces applied on both poles of the spindle are exactly uh, similar or um, yeah, are equal. And because of this, the chromosomes will be um, will be placed right in the middle of the spindle in a very straight line because the forces applied from the from both poles of the spindle are exactly the same. So the centrosomes are going to apply pulling forces or equal pulling forces, and this is why I'm going to get this, which is called the metaphase plate which are the chromosomes placed right in the middle of the spindle in a straight line. This is what happens in the metaphase. At the end of metaphase here, I have a checkpoint. In this check checkpoint, the cell checks whether the two forces applied from the two centrom centrosomes are uh, equal because this is very important in order to get exactly the same amount of DNA on both sides of the spindle later. This is the end of the metaphase and then the anaphase starts. In the anaphase, the two centrosomes will continue to apply these um, pulling forces, which is going to separate every two chromatids from each other, like this. The separation of the two chromatids. So this is the chromosome. The chromosome is going to be attached to the microtubule and then because of the pulling forces from both sides, these two sister chromatids are going to be separated from each other. Every two sister chromatids are going to be separated and then at the end of the anaphase, I'm going to get exactly the same amount of DNA and exactly 46 chromosomes at each side of the spindle. And this is what I call the telophase. In the telophase, so as I told you before, I have on um, on both sides of the cell, I'm, I'm having one set of DNA at each side of the cell, and I have exactly 46 chromosomes at, in each set of DNA and one centromere. And I don't have any spindle anymore because the microtubules are going to disintegrate after the separation of the DNA. The, mit the mitotic phase or the mito uh, mitosis is simply the separation of the two sets of DNA. This is like in a very simple uh, term. So in the telophase, uh, what happens here is that as I have two now two separated sets of DNA, a nucleic envelope will be formed around each of these two sets. So I'm getting two nuclei here, uh, one nuclei at each side of the cell. And then the cytoplasm here, or the cytoplasmic membrane is going to be pushed or uh, pressed in the middle in order to start to separate the cytoplasm and the cytoplasmic membrane. And this is the end of the mitotic phase. Now the separation of the cytoplasm and the separation of the cytoplasmic membrane happens at the at the very end, um, which is at the at this phase, which is called the cytokinesis. In the cytokinesis, the two cells are separated from each other, and, and I'm getting two sister cells. Each one of them has 46 chromosomes in each in, in its nucleus. And this is what's called the cytokinesis. And this is the end of the cell cycle. At the end of the cell cycle, every one of these two cells is ready to enter a new cell cycle. And this is why it's a cycle, because it, it never stops. Now there is something here. Some of the cells in the body, in the G1 phase here, they don't complete the cell cycle but they rather enter something called the G0 phase. And this happens, happens in two cases. Either if there is a saturation in the, um, in the tissue, for example, if I have a tissue that had, has enough number of cells inside, the cells enter the G0 phase, 
Um, and in this case, the cells will be able to re-enter into the cell cycle if the saturation of the tissue is decreased. Or in some cells, when the cells are differentiated to certain type of cells which have a certain uh, function in the body, uh, they don't um, they don't undergo mitosis or they don't under undergo cell division. Like, for example, neurons, nerve cells, they don't un undergo um, mitosis or cell division because these cells remain like they don't divide simply. And also some types of uh, muscle cells like the heart muscles, for example, they, they enter when they are differentiated into neurons or heart muscles, they enter to the G0 phase and they never different they never divide during the life now you might find this like a little bit complicated so i'm going to summarize everything in a very very easy way this is the cell cycle in like in a in a in a um, short summary okay this is a small cell it gets a little bit bigger it starts to form proteins and organelles then we get a um, duplication of the DNA and a duplication of the centrosome. Then the cell gets a little bit more bigger with more proteins and organelles in its uh, cytoplasm. Then the uh, DNA starts to con condense and then the spindle starts to form. And then the nucleic membrane or envelope is disintegrated. The chromosomes start to, uh, to be attached to the spindle. The two centrosomes apply the force on the spindle and they pull the uh, chromosomes from both sides and then the two sister chromatids are separated here. We get two separated sets of DNA at each side of the cell, then two nuclear envelopes will be uh, formed again and then these two cells will be separated to give me two daughter cells or two identical daughter cells. This is the whole life cycle. It's super uh, easy to understand when you understand it this way. And these are the steps. You know, this is the interface here, G1, S, G2. Then the, cells, uh, the cell enters to the uh, mitotic phase, which is prophase, prometaphase here, the metaphase with the uh, mitotic plate here, or the metaplate. And then the anaphase with the two chromosome or two chromatids separated, and then the cell will be um, divided into two identical cells. Here, this is the cytokinesis. Yeah, this is everything I wanted to tell you about uh, mitosis and cell cycle. I hope you find this easy to understand and um, interesting as well. Um, if you like the video, don't. Um, forget to like, share, comment, and to subscribe. Um, I'm gonna do another video about um, here the DNA duplication. This step, because this is a like a, this is a whole topic I'm going to speak about, and about meiosis, which is the uh, the other type of cell division. Um, yeah, so see you later. Ciao.